Welcome everyone again, for those uh, who've joined us in the past two minutes. Uh, my name is Michael Klote, I'm the Head of Communications of the International Transport Forum. And it's my particular pleasure to um, introduce you to my colleagues, uh, Marithi Fernando and Dejan Nakovšek, who've kindly agreed to be with us today to present the key findings of a report that they uh, co-authored with some other colleagues uh, and which was published three weeks ago, uh, The Future of Passenger Mobility and Goods Transport in Estonia. Now, this is relevant not only for Estonia, but for most countries, I dare say, and Estonia is an interesting case study. This is actually the first transport policy review that we've done uh, for a country at ITF. And um, we looked at uh, a broad range of transport policies, trying to find um, the spots that could be improved, that should maybe be improved. And the ambition was to provide the government of Estonia with uh, um, uh, evidence-based background and input for their national mobility master plan, which they're working on. Um, so this is quite a big project and with quite a broad scope of, uh, of questions. It was made possible through the uh, European Commission, the DG uh, reform, uh, the former um, reform, uh, Structural Reform Services Program, I think it's called, um, is behind this and was instrumental in getting this underway. Um, so I suspect that not all of you listeners uh, come from Estonia, but you will find that this is still very interesting. A few housekeeping remarks. We will have uh, about 10 minutes presentation from our authors. Um, and after that, we launch straight into questions. We want to hear your questions and we want to provide answers to them. Um, please, if you want to ask a question, use the Q&A icon at the bottom of the screen. There's a Q&A with sort of two little um, bubbles there. Uh, and that's where you put in your question. I'll pick them up and post them um, to the authors. Uh, do, do not use the chat, uh, maybe it's, that's, that's even disabled, use the Q&A function and just shoot your questions whenever you uh, feel it's the right moment, I'll pick them up at the end. The other thing is if you don't see the uh, presentation big on your screen, then that's because you need to go to the top right of your screen to the view icon, which appears when you move your mouse there, and change the view to flip around the speaker and the presentation, the screen share mode, then you'll see it uh, in the proper size. So that's it for me. Without further ado, thank you all for being here. And um, I hand over to my colleague, Dejan Makovšek, to take us through the future of passenger mobility and goods transport in Estonia. Dejan. Thank you, Michael. Hi, everybody. Time is short, so let me jump straight into the topic. As Michael said, um, this is a national transport policy review. The case is Estonia, but we might well be discussing any other country because what is interesting is that this is one of the first national transport policy reviews and uh, it's, it's difficult uh, to see how to compare countries in terms of where they are and how they are progressing. Um, in terms of what we did, uh, three key points, three objectives. The first was to identify key issues in the existing transport policy and proposed reforms. The second was to analyze how we could report progress on uh, these distinct policy areas to the general public in a simple and uh, transparent way. And last was to help Estonia build a strategic national transport model because they have not yet built a national transport model at full scale. Uh, since we have uh, a limited amount of time, this is just a teaser and the key is for you to ask questions once me and Maliti are done with our presentations. So what about the key issues in transport policy? In Estonia, we reviewed 10 uh, policy areas and you can see those uh, themes on the left-hand side. They are uh, the 10 uh, areas we reviewed. And on the right-hand side, you can see the number of issues that we identified and where we proposed uh, reforms. In total, there were 61 issues that we identified and 61 reforms were proposed to correct them. And the most critical of those were on, uh, on those that are shaded red. Um, now, clearly we don't have the time to go through the top uh, 30 something issues. So I'm just focusing on the select uh, few. 
where you might see what Estonia uh, faces, what kind of challenges Estonia faces in the future, and what we proposed uh, to do with regard to that. So one of the key issues in Estonia was the current institutional structure, which is how infrastructure planning is organized, how efficiency incentives are given to infrastructure managers, so uh, bodies that manage infrastructure, uh, how independence is handled in decision making, and um, how is uh, infrastructure planning coordinated across across the transportation and other sectors. I won't go into details of this uh, picture, but what Estonians have right now and where they wanted to go is something very different from the vision that you can see on this picture. Estonia initially wanted to go uh, follow the Scandinavian approach where all the key functions are concentrated in a single transport administration. What we proposed is that they concentrate their spread out function of infrastructure planning in a dedicated division within the transport sector, which you can see here, it says strategic policy division, that they establish a body that would coordinate infrastructure planning with other sectors, not only transport, which is called Infrastructure Estonia. We also propose that they establish an in-house capacity center, capacity building center, which we call technical resource center here, that would develop and spread uh, knowledge about processes and how to do things right in project appraisal and procurement. And we also proposed that the actual infrastructure management functions that Estonia currently has uh, spread out over very many institutions are organized as state-owned enterprises. And that specifically meant reforming the current road administration. Um, so that was, that was the organizational part of what we suggested should happen in Estonia. And it's probably true in what should happen in very many countries. Now, the next key part is that Estonians currently collect about two times the uh, fuel tax revenues that is needed to cover road uh, expenditures annually. But on the other hand, they have almost no user charging or tolling. And that critically inhibits their capability to finance infrastructure and forces them to use uh, PPPs if they want to go off the balance sheet in the European uh, Union. So what we proposed is that they offset a portion of the fuel tax revenues, replace that with electronic vehicle miles tolling system, and use that revenue to fund uh, the new road company. That creates a number of benefits. For example, it solves the fuel tax revenue erosion because uh, vehicles are getting more and more efficient and fuel tax revenues are reducing over time. Um, motorway company would be funding independent in its funding, so it would not be dependent on annual uh, budget allocations. Uh, they would uh, reduce losses from tank tourism, where truckers uh, and people fill up their tanks before they enter Estonia, uh, as the neighbors have some different prices in, in terms of how they tax fuel and it enables new road financing solutions. As I mentioned, it is possible in the European Union to achieve off-balance sheet treatment of a um, state-owned enterprise, which means that the debt of this company would not be counted against the debt, public debt of the country. And indeed, such bodies already exist in several European member countries. Uh, there was a range of other recommendations that we did. I won't go into details of those. One was do the analysis before making a decision. That's why we do cost benefit analysis. And it is very important to establish this function as a decision support and not an ex post legitimization of political decisions that were already made. In the procurement, also uh, many things to be done. Um, one of the critical ones was that they need to do uh, a risk analysis when uh, before they start making decisions and that the results of those risk that risk analysis need to adjust the baseline estimates of the projects they're using be it cost or or benefits um, it is true that in very many countries the risk analysis is treated separately of the numbers 
that are used to make decisions and this is not how things should be done. Uh, another major area that we focused on was how to steer user behavior. So uh, one part of that was the user charging or tolling that I mentioned before. But then there are very many things that also could be improved in Estonia, such as uh, rolling back the free public transport, uh, which was introduced a few years ago, um, and improving the funding independence of public transport uh, authorities. We also did modeling on that, what would happen if user charges were reintroduced and the effect was uh, minimal. With that, because we are very short on time, I would like also to pass to my colleague Malisi to tell you a little bit about what we did on the modeling side. So it was not just soft analysis, but also crunching the numbers. Please, uh, Maliti. Thanks, Dan. Um, as Dan mentioned, the modeling tools that were part of this policy review were, were and are meant to allow the decision makers to test the policy reforms and see what the outcome might be and evaluate them based on the greater policy goals they might have. This could be from the perspective of CO2 mitigation or affordability, et cetera. Uh, we use these models to look at three different policy scenarios, one being do nothing, business as usual. Uh, the next one being low ambition, which looked at implementing the low hanging fruit of the policy measures and high ambition, which was a more optimistic and optimal uh, approach. The assumptions under all of these scenarios were made based on workshops and presentations um, in collaboration with the Estonian authorities. Uh, now, moving on we can take a look at what actually consisted of the modeling suite. We had three different models. The urban passenger model focused on the Tallinn and Haryu region. Um, the national passenger model looked at travel between counties in all of Estonia. And the freight model was um, more aggregate and uh, focused specifically on rail. Um, and it was based off of the ITF international trans uh, freight transport model. In the interest of time, the next slide will uh, take a look at just a few of the results from the urban modeling. As, uh, as Dan already mentioned, some of the policy recommendations, a lot of them were focused on behavior change, moving people away from private car use towards more sustainable modes to achieve uh, greater sustainability goals. Um, so this slide shows the impact of the different policy measures on the existing mode share. We start off in this business as usual case with most of the car trip, uh, most of the trips in Estonia happening by car, greater than 50%. About a quarter of them happen by foot and less than 20% are by public transport. Now, when you look at the behavior change measures, the user charging, specifically a congestion charge for Tallinn, um, has the most significant impact. Um, that being said, the other measures, though smaller, together build up a, uh, a composite set of policy reforms that together reduce the car mode share from 54% to 28% and nearly double the public transport share. In addition, as Dan mentioned, we did test the increase of a public transport tariff um, to look at uh, helping cost recovery measures and the result, as he mentioned, was minimal in terms of moving away from public transport. Uh, next slide, please. A quick summary of the national passenger and freight modeling results. Um, the national passenger transport mo uh, measures were largely focused on rail improvements. Rail service improvements included frequency, uh, increased frequencies and speed, and electrification was exactly that, electrification of the network. In addition, there was a movement from a, an older car fleet towards a newer one, which encompassed greater electrification and alternative fuels, as well as an optimization looking at increasing car occupancy, which of course has um, CO2 uh, impacts or improvements. The results, uh, as you can see here, the rail share did double as a result of these improvements, but it starts off at 2%. So the doubling gets us to 4%, but it doesn't have a transformative effect overall. Uh, national passenger transport is heavily dominated by car use. Therefore, the total CO2 reduction is again quite small, but if, there, if the car fleet was to um, transition, this uh, results in a 30% reduction. Freight transport is again um, just on the right side there. 
there's a small increase in rail share due to the rail service improvements and a substantial decrease in the CO2 from rail specifically from a freight perspective. Uh, given we're short on time, uh, next slide please, and I'll just finish off with some takeaways from the modeling. The user charging was the most effective lever uh, to change user behavior. Um, the measures that targeted public transport and active modes were did have a positive impact, but they do not make a very big difference unless private car use is disincentivized, given that it has such a big share to begin with. And in terms of CO2 emissions, both for the urban and the national passenger transport um, models or uh, perspective, adapting the car fleet is one of the most efficient ways to reduce CO2 emissions. And with that, um, I'm ready to hand over to, to the audience to see what questions you have for us. Um, Michael, I think you need to unmute. Sorry. I'm still muted. Sorry. Hello, can you hear me now? You're good now, yes. Could you hear me in between or was I muted all the time? Uh, the whole time. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Um, I was saying thank you, Malithi. Thank you, Dejan, for, for this very uh, concise presentation. I appreciate that's not easy to kind of fit uh, even a summary of the top level results into a short presentation like this. But there's lots of stuff in there that 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 I'm sure elicits a number a number of questions. I can see the first popping up in the chat, and I will, will um, uh, read them to you in, in a couple of seconds. Just to give uh, you an advance warning, um, all the attendees, that at the end of the session we'll be taking a quick poll, and you'll have a window popping up on your window asking you two questions. Uh, whether you like this or not and whether you would come again so keep that in mind and don't be surprised um, we'll do that right at the end um, so uh, Tom Tom Worsley um, asks a question um, is there any indication from the Estonian government about, about how far they will go in adopting the report's recommendations have you had any feedback from Tallinn nice I suppose that's a question for me. <laughs> um, we, let's say that the, these exchanges were informal, but uh, the the, uh, the feedback that we got is that Estonians are already pursuing through some studies, the practical implementation of some of the reforms that we have suggested. For example, they are investigating what would be the fiscal impact of them switching or offsetting a portion of the uh, fuel tax revenues and replacing that with, uh, with tolling and how soon that could be done. Um, what will actually happen in Estonia with the results that we have given them or recommendations fully depends on their local political um, process. So I hope that uh, some portion of what we have recommended will uh, see the day of light in practice, but uh, I think be uh, naive to expect that everything that we have recommended will materialize. Right. Um, there was a um, considerable uh, mention of road user charges and um, the benefits that that could bring in various ways. And uh, there's a question from, from Sasha Ruya who asks, uh, did you consider the cost to build and operate a road user charging system in your model? And if so, which toll collection technology did you consider? That's from Malithi, I think. Uh, the short answer is we did not consider specific toll uh, technologies the impact on um, the model specifically looks at the decision making from a user perspective and so um, when we model the user charging whether it's the tolling or the congestion charge we take that into account in the in what the what the user might consider to be their um, their cost of use so the costs to the operators and um, whoever it is that's collecting the tolls was not taken into account in this model Thanks, Melissi. And a question on, on the rail sector. 
um, which uh, uh, asks, could you please briefly explain the rail sector challenges in Estonia as you defined it in the study? Yes, I can, I can take that. Um, the, the key rail challenge in Estonia was there is currently, um, let's say, an excess on one hand of infrastructure capacity that uh, resulted from the drop of uh, Russian transit through Estonia. Uh, because the huge amounts of Russian cargo are no longer using Estonian ports uh, to transport bulk goods. And there is, of course, the, the desire, the need to re-establish Estonia as a link between North and South. And this is the main reason why the Rail Baltica is being rolled out and heavily supported by the European Commission. I note that uh, we did not uh, focus or it was out of our scope to discuss whether Rail Baltica makes sense or not. We were mainly focused on uh, what they can do to improve the implementation of that project since it's the most significant portion. And on that note, uh, multiple recommendations were made with regard to the organization, how the, the project is being, uh, how the execution is being planned, and specifically the need to start talking with prospective users of this new piece of infrastructure now. So that means involving in the discussions uh, the destination, which would be Finland, uh, and also the potential origins of future freight that should be using this, this new connection. Right. There's a further question on, on road. I should have perhaps taken this before to link it with the car uh, user charging question, but it's um, it's about trucking and about zero emission trucking in Estonia. ICCT and other institutions expect the road freight transport uh, to grow and a bold shift to rail would be great to see, but is it realistic? Have you assessed electrification scenario or do you expect to see a pure hydrogen scenario in Estonia for heavy duty vehicles? We have not uh, assessed specific uh, fuel scenarios uh, in Estonia, whether it be uh, electricity, hydrogen, or, or something else. Uh, we have investigated measures that nudge or stimulate, incentivize users to go left or right, or to, to use more, more trucks or less trucks or different kinds of trucks. And that has to do with truck registrations, um, uh, quotas, uh, training of users uh, running the truck. So several countries have uh, pursued uh, investigations and, and research papers on the measures, policy measures that could be implemented to make freight traffic cleaner. It is, however, um, naive to expect that uh, traffic could move from truck to rail in a in a huge kind of sense due to the nature of the goods that are being being transported so a large part of the freight will still remain uh, on the trucks even if the rail connections would be great thanks um please continue to ask questions we still have a few minutes so if you have any any other um queries uh put them in the q a uh, maybe I can ask Malithi something which, which I find interesting. Can you explain a little bit um, how you actually determined the uh, the change in the mode shares as a response to the policies that uh, the, the policy interventions? What were the factors that kind of were integrated there? Uh, sure. Uh, the We decided on, we determined what the mode shares would be based on what we describe as the generalized cost for a user. So this is I mean, it's like an equation, but what it does is it, it helps us to determine how someone will react based on time and cost measures um, that are associated with each measure. So it's probably best to use an example. For, um, in the reallocation of road space measure, we look at deprioritizing cars on the road and prioritizing active mobility. So this what this does is it improves the speeds or the perceived speeds um, or the, the time that it takes people to walk or cycle or walk to a public transport stop. So these changes or improvements in speed for these modes will result in a shift towards them. At the same time, uh, car, for example, um, it is 
is, is less attractive because the time required for car travel is increased as a result of some of these space reallocation measures. So some of the measures that we're talking about here involve um, better infrastructure for uh, cyclists or walking um, or pedestrians. It involves limiting speeds for cars. It, it also talks about uh, narrowing streets. Therefore, um, so it's, it's playing on time for the most part in that, in that measure. Um, but as I mentioned in the user charging and things like that, we do talk about cost as well. So it's largely time and perceived cost. Right, thanks. Um, there's there's one, one almost final question that has just come in, which uh, asks, that's probably for Dayan, um, the study recommends that Estonia shouldn't be a, a hub. Um, you know, what's so bad about being a hub? Yes, thank you, Michael. Well, depends in what circumstances you want to be a transport hub. There's, Estonia is not the only one who is trying to pursue uh, an objective of becoming a regional transport hub. That's usually in, happens in very many countries. Uh, but the problem with this is uh, the infrastructure capacity. So it's, it's not uh, whether Estonia should be a hub per se. The, the question is whether Estonia should build additional infrastructure capacity in the pursuit of becoming a regional transport hub. The main issue here is that if Estonia builds new infrastructure exclusively to support transit traffic, um, that infrastructure will never achieve full cost, full cost recovery. Uh, it's slightly better on uh, road, it's worse on rail, and what happens then is that the taxpayers eventually subsidize transit traffic going through the country. That's the, that's the key issue behind this. Of course, some would expect that the pure transit through the country would create some kind of a wider economic benefits, but that's generally not the case. Thanks. Answer. Um, I need to raise one question at the end. I uh, don't see any further questions, but this is something that I think is on many people's minds when they think about mobility and Estonia, which is uh, that uh, Tallinn was one of the first cities that actually uh, made public transport available for free. And if I've read the report uh, correctly, that is something that you think is not such a good idea. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on, on why is that? Uh, yes. So basically, it seems very attractive, but the key thing that drives public transport demand uh, is one quality and uh, uh, the quality of public transport and the relative cost of alternative. In this case, mainly the car. And what happens is when when you uh, make public transport free, you make the transport authorities dependent on the local local budget annual discussions, who will get the money, will it be the, the local transport authority or somebody else? And that makes the funding stream of public transport unstable and unpredictable. And over the long run, that means that the quality of the public service, public transport will be reduced, which drives people away. What was quite obvious in the Estonian case, uh, since several years of data have existed, is that once the public transport has been made free, it didn't really substantially increase the, the number of people using it because the quality of the service was not any different and at the same time uh, using cars was still uh, free, was not told. Uh, so that's basically making it free just means that in the long run the quality will reduce and then you will have less users and not more. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't see any other questions. So we're at uh, 14.31, perfect timing. We've kept to our, to our format of uh, 30 minutes to give you all an opportunity to have a speed date with, uh, with the authors, as it were, and to, to ask uh, questions. I hope you enjoyed this. The, um, the poll popped up a little earlier than, than it should have probably, but uh, maybe you had made up your mind by that point, whether you like this or not. This is just for us to help us, um, you know, improve the format and see what interests people and what doesn't. Um, so that'll be very useful for us. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us uh, from not only Estonia, a lot of places uh, around the world, in fact. And if you have any questions on the report, um, contact us, contact the authors uh, via the ITF website. And if you haven't already, of course, download it. Thank you so much for being with us and have a very good afternoon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.